Now we will discuss about few important attributes and definition of remote sensing. Grayscale is related to radiometric resolution. Grayscale normally uh, related to the binary image system only contain two colors black or the white it used in a image system to to the various set in between the various set to black to white or white to black it's a one bit image normally the digital number or dn value of the grayscale normally varies from 0 to 256 it's it varies up to the 8 bit and for the grayscale, visible band is most uh, most active sensor. In the cases of uh, panchromatic image or the black and white image, normally the image sends to the visible band, that is the RGB band. Here I would like to mention that day and night, 24 hours, our solar day is a good example of grayscale. Grayscale is normally related to the visible band and the wider part of the spectrum and it's related to the panchromatic image it's known as a one bit image grayscale is a range of shades of gray without any apparent color the darkest possible shade is black here the radiometric resolution is zero because there is no transmit and all are absorbed that why that is the black that that is the dn value is zero and if the reflectant is very high, that is the possible uh, brighter color, that is the white. So, in grayscale, radiometric ranges varies from 0 to 256. 0 stands for the black. There is no reflectant and maximum reflectant that stands for the 256, that stands for the white color. Normally, it's related to panchromatic image. Day and night is a very good example of, natural good example of grayscale. Let's have a look various aspect, various uh, level of grayscale. It's, this is one bit and this is two bit and this is up to, it can be up to eight bit, zero to 256. Day and night is a very good example of grayscale with the intensity of light to intensity of reflected EMR and the brightness. Panchromatic image, normally the binary image, it's contain black and white color panchromatic band normally uh, normally use the broader part of electromagnetic spectrum it used the visible band to sense the earth surfaces it used the rgb panchromatic image supplies high spatial resolution uh, it's uh, the pixel are very small a uh, landsat 7 and landsat 8 provides 3d view with the panchromatic image the cartoset 2 cartoset 2 is a series of satellite of indian remote sensing satellite cartoset 2 1 a to f all have a panchromatic band with the special resolution of 15 meters it provides very specific and little information about the earth surfaces and uh, panchromatic images and black and white image it's used the wider part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's used the band RGB, three bands, and it provides very little information. The first and foremost requirement for the remote sensing process is the energy. That energy to illuminate the target, to illuminate the earth surface, to illuminate the earth object. And this energy is the form of we get this energy in the forms of electromagnetic radiation so electromagnetic radiation plays a vital role in remote sensing whether it is passive remote sensing or the active remote sensing the emr travels in the speed of the light and after reaching the emr on the earth's surface it re radiated back to the space and recorded by the artificial satellite the electromagnetic spectrum is a combination of seven bands. It starts from gamma rays and ultimately long up to the long wave, up to the radio wave. And visible band is more effective, more used in remote sensing. But in recent, infrared band, microwave band and radio band also use 
in the modern remote sensing techniques, especially in the reset and the in the cases of Cortosat 2. Those are the bands of electromagnetic spectrum. RGB are more intensively used and uh, and the other long wave band infrared, short wave infrared, medium range infrared, long wave infrared, far wave infrared, microwave and radio wave all are used in remote sensing method. A EMR is a sinusoidal waves. Here the magnetic field and electric field are described by the two color and the arrows shows the distance or the direction of propagation. It's a sinusoidal waves. Absolute zero is the lowest possible temperature of the earth surfaces. Absolute zero is the lowest limit of the thermodynamic temperature scale. It uh, the unit of absolute scale normally measured by the K that is the Kelvin. Absolute uh, zero is an infinity cold scale. Absolute zero, if you convert it into the centigrade scale, it's equivalent to minus 273 degrees centigrade. And earth object with the temperature more than the Kelvin scale, more than the absolute zero, start to emit and re-radiate. So absolute zero is very relevant in the EMR radiation and the remote sensing method. Differences between the geostationary satellite and polar satellite on the basis of orbital motion distance from the earth and their uses. Basically geostationary satellite revolve in equatorial orbit and complete one circle of the earth in 24 hours. On the other hand polar satellite revolves in polar orbit of the earth and it takes time to complete one circle of the earth. It may be 16 days, 14 days in the cases of IRS series, the polar orbital by polar uh, orbital satellite and its temporal resolution is 16 days. And in the cases of geostationary satellite, it plays at the height of at least 35,000 to 40,000 kilometers from the earth surfaces. In contrary to the polar satellite, it placed uh, normally lower than the lower than the geostationary satellite. And here, I would like to mention that our moon is a sun synchronous satellite. It moves pole to pole, and our Chandrayaan two is a geostationary satellite it's just launched in 2019. Most of the communication satellite and all TV broadcast satellite are the example of geostationary satellite. The false color composition is related to the images or the sense that related to the multispectral sensor. False color composition, rather standard false color composition, helps to visualize the image, helps to interpret the image, helps to interpret the minute and details of the image or the earth information. Normally, in standard fault color composition, red, green and infrared band are very popular in use. In standard false color composition, normally always use the band which is greater than the existing wavelength is the greater than the existing band in standard false color composition normally uh, in blue is the blue band is assigned to green green band is assigned to red red in near infrared this is the standardized form of false color composition and it helps to get an idea about the minute details because the standard false color composition helps to visualize the wavelength which are no, not normally visualized by the uh, human eyes and it enhances the spectral separation. That spectral separation helps to interpretation. Digital number or DN value is the main attributes of image structure. The image as consisting of a teeny equal areas arranged in a regular row and the column. 
and those are known as a pixel. Each pixel is determined on an XY coordinate system and it starts from the upper left corner of the image. Each pixel has a numerical value. That numerical value of that particular pixel is known as digital number or the DN value. The DN value represent or the records the intensity of electromagnetic energy reflected by the earth's surface. It measured for the ground resolution cell represented by the pixel. So the number, the numerical value of DN is very important. Digital number ranges from zero to some higher number on a gray scale. In gray scale, it ranges from 0 to 256 because gray scale and panchromatic image, the radiometric resolution is up to 8 bit. Uh, here, this is a raster image. This is a raster image. And those are the DN value or the digital number. So, come to the point of raster and vector. Raster layer is a pixel layer. Pixels are tiny square grid filled with the solid color. They are so small and so many that together they make an illusion of an image. Raster consi consists of a matrix cell or the pixel organized into the row and the column. And each cell representing by information of the earth surfaces and each cell known as a pixel. Each pixel has a numerical value that is known as digital number. So raster or vector both are very important in remote sensing techniques because both format, both format used to store the geospatial data. Uh, raster is a data set composed of row and the column of pixel. Each pixel represents the geographical region and the value of the pixel represents some characteristic of that region. Suppose those are the row and column and the green, green square grid is the pixel. And now come to the vector. Vector is a nothing but a, a combination of line Point, sorry, points, line and area, rather polygon. It's a raster data structure within the square matrix, within the particular, particular pixel, with the particular DN value. Raster data format, that is square grid or the matrix grid, uh, that format also are used to store aerial and satellite imagery data. A representation of the world using the point, line and polygons, that is the vector data. Vector model model are useful for storing the data that has discrete boundaries such as country's border, land, parcel, street, all these things. Therefore, raster data consists of an array of regularly spaced cell. Those are the row and column within the pixel, within the specific GN value. The points in a vector data set need to be regularly spaced with points, line and polygon. These are the raster layer and this is the vector layer. Okay, now come to the nadir point. Nadir point on the Earth's surface directly below the satellite. Special resolution is optimal here. Here the angle is perfectly per perpendicular or perfectly 90 degree. It is also called as a sub-satellite point and perfectly perpendicular to the satellite center and the object of the ground. The image, uh, the imagery we can get from the satellite and if it is recorded with the perfectly, uh, perfectly from the nadir point, then there will be no distortion in scale. This is the nadir point, perfectly 90 degrees. That angle is perfectly 90 degrees. This is the nadir point. Here the swath and list is minimum. That's why we can get very precise and little information without any distortion.
Now come to the optical and thermal remote sensing. Optical remote sensing deal with those parts of the electromagnetic spectrum characterized by the wavelength from the visible to the near infrared up to the thermal infrared and collecting radiating information and emits from the observed surfaces. So optical remote sensing basically used the visible band that is RGB and the near infrared, near infrared band. It's also in, in related to this multispectral sensor. It's include RGB and near infrared band. Thermal infrared remote sensing. In, in that kind of remote sensing, radiation refers to the electromagnetic waves with the wavelength of between 3.5 to 20 microns. Basically, the thermal infrared remote sensing record the long wave radiation. It records the spectral band. It uses the spectral band lies in the right hand side of the visible band, rather right hand side of the infrared band. It uses the microwave band and the radio wave band. In the cases of uh, reset 2, 3, the, the, the thermal infrared remote sensing is using here, the radio wave and micro wave, that you, those are the long wave radiation recorded by the sensor. In thermal infrared remote sensing is associated with the multispectral scanner. It provides very detailed information and very environmental related information like forest fire, uh, cyclone, tornado, that kind of information we can record it through the thermal infrared remote sensing. Thermal infrared remote sensing is very relevant in the study of jet stream, heat budget, alvado, identification of geological structure, soil moisture, hydrology, volcanicity, forest fire, coal fire, seismology, environment, and heat loss from the building, all these things. Basically, the high heat, high radiation is uh, sensed through the thermal remote sensing method. It's related to multispectral sensor. It used the right hand part of the visible band of electromagnetic spectrum. Basically, it used the microwave and radio wave band. Thermal remote sensing is a passive remote sensing. Here, the natural source of EMR that comes from the sun and re-radiated back to the space and that re-radiated EMR recorded by the multispectral sensor that is in passive remote sensing. So, Thermal remote sensing is a passive remote sensing and thermal remote sensing normally use the right hand part of the electromagnetic spectrum that is infrared band, microwave band and radio wave band. Thermal remote sensing basically used the long wave reflected radiation. It records long wave reflected EMR that is the natural source of EMR. That EMR comes from the sun. It's a passive remote sensing. Radar is known as a spy satellite. It's proposed by the ISRO. It's also known as reconnaissance reconnection satellite. It, it recorded long wave radiation that is radio wave. And reset is very much useful for weather forecasting, cyclone, super cyclone, all these things. It also important for the different purpose. And after the 2008 Mumbai attack, Mumbai attack, the radar is used for the defense purpose and also for the military as well as for the civilian purpose. It's an imagery of RGB band of Makura district, West Bengal. It's a imagery, satellite imagery with standard false color composition. The area is very similar to the 1 is to 50,000 topo seats. RF is 1 is to 50,000. It's a river is the mother and this it's the Bordhaman town. So let's have a look of the satellite imagery and the area is uh, very similar to the topographical seats.